To the chopping board receiver. The thrill isn't in the winning, it's in the chase. Here's a receiver developed for a QRP construction competition. The aim was to develop a receiver that could be built by a beginner. In my view, this receiver qualifies. It has less than 25 parts and they're all easily obtainable. Only discrete components are used. There's no unusual ICs, toys or other items. I've called it the chopping board. As you can see, it's built on a kitchen chopping board. That provides the carry handle, the coil former and the mounting for the circuit board and other components. In this video, I'll demonstrate the receiver tuning both bands 80 and 40 meters. Looking at the front panel, there's the antenna socket, the headphone sockets, the power connection, the tuning control that affects the frequency of the ceramic resonator BFO and the peaking control which peaks the front end. It tunes between 3.5 and 10 MHz. Finally up here we have the coil. Round, basket weave style, through slits cut in the board. I used an old tip from a soldering iron, one that you wouldn't use for electrical work, but that was enough to carve holes in the plastic. When we leave daylight saving, it's not only an hour earlier, but 40 metres um, the conditions change very rapidly after sunset. The receiver will power a crystal earpiece or even these low impedance phones. A useful trick is to have the two sections in series and that increases the audio output given. That's why on the front panel, as you'll see here, there are two headphone sockets. A mono socket for the crystal earpiece and a stereo socket with the earth unconnected to anything for the stereo phones. An important part of this receiver is the antenna coil and how it's coupled to the main detector front end coil. When the antenna coil is like so, it is loosely coupled to the detector coil. That's best for maximum selectivity. For instance, if you're tuning 7 meg at night and you want to reject close by broadcast stations. On the other hand, during the daytime and you want tighter coupling, then you just bend the coil to be closer to the detector coil. That improves sensitivity but may reduce front end performance. So you use that during the day when signals aren't all that strong. Let's have a listen to the receiver and see what it sounds like. Here I'm peaking the front end on 3.5 MHz. On the other side of the chopping board are all the innards to the receiver. There's the back of the coil, the peaking control and the tuning control. Most components are mounted on a circuit board, dead bug style. There's also the antenna socket, the two headphone sockets and the power socket down the bottom. Just looking inside, there's the main tuning capacitor that adjusts the frequency of the local oscillator using the 3.58 meg ceramic resonator and the BC548. The output from that is not connected directly to anything but it is loosely coupled with a small length of wire. Up here is the front end tuning capacitor connected to the spider web coil and that connects straight to the input of the infinite impedance detector using an MPF102. The audio from that is fed to a BC548 audio amplifier. All up, it's a simple design that performs well. Ready? 
80 meters. the chopping board receiver. Browse the web for circuits like infinite impedance detectors, audio amplifiers and culprits oscillators and you'll be able to put something like this together in no time. As you can hear from the results, it's very simple but the results are excellent for the small number of parts used. <laughs> 